All right, so we're here to talk about personal statements today, how to write the best personal statement. Uh, my name is Julie, I'm a current student and I'm also an admissions counselor here and I'm with everyone else because I'm figuring out how to write my personal statement too. And when I was thinking about it, I knew the exact right person to talk to because Sue is so experienced and has a great way of explaining it. Well, thank you, Julie, and hello everyone. My name is Sue Barras and I'm the Director of Admissions for Tulane School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine, and Julie is my colleague. But you're right, Julie, the question I get most is, mm -hmm. how do I write a personal statement? Me too. So it's, a, it's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me to get more information, I went to each of our review committees in our six different departments and spoke to them about personal statements yeah. and how do you make yourself stand out in your application. Absolutely. Another question I get quite a lot. So I put those questions to the review committee and I was surprised that the majority of the feedback I got was the same. Hmm. They actually used some of the exact same words on how to write a personal statement and they said that's your place to shine, that's where you should um, express yourself and that's how you stand out in your application sure. is through your personal statement. So I asked how should they go about writing that and they said the main thing is to show your passion for public health okay. passion. and that's what most of the faculty members on the review committee said was to see passion in the personal statement. So I pressed them further mm -hmm. <laughs> and like if you're reading a personal statement you have a blank sheet here how do you put passion on there that someone else can understand and read that? Mm -hmm. So uh, one faculty member broke it down. He said, everyone does not start off being interested in public health. Usually something leads them right. to, to consider public health as a career pair. And with all the career pa paths that are out there in the world, why are you here applying for a master's or doctoral program at our school in right. public health. Something had to spark your interest, Julie. Something did. So I've been asking uh, applicants and students that for years, what sparked their interest right. in public health. And it truly is, now I can see it's, it is the passion. They truly have amazing stories. It could be something as much as going overseas and seeing disparities mm -hmm. and wanting to make a difference in people's lives. I had someone whose grandfather died because of emphysema and he wanted to make smoking cessation his life's work. Right. And the most mundane reason I got is, well, in undergrad I just took Public Health 101 because mm -hmm. it sounded more interesting than sociology and I needed a social science. But then when they took that class, it opened a whole new world to them. Wow. Something that they hadn't considered or thought of before. And when they realized public health is, is so broad and so diverse and that it can help save lives in a different kind of way right. than medicine does. So that's what's the, very important and it can show your passion is how did you get, what sparked your interest in public health? Absolutely, and where would you put that in the personal statement? Well, I think you could start off with that because it does have to have a beginning and a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my suggestion Okay. for this, for your narrative and your personal statement. So start off with how did you become interested in public health? Sure. Then after that, you sh public health is broad, right? Mm -hmm. It goes from mathematics and statistics to our school has tropical medicine, government issues and policy, mm -hmm community issues, environmental issues, it's very broad, epidemiology. So it's so broad, and you have to choose one program to apply to. Yes. So out of this broad array of public health areas, where are you going to uh, apply? And then to what program, and then why that program, out of all of your choices in public health, what draws you to that one particular program that you're applying to? Sure. Then I would finish it up with your career goals. In your, in your, if you have this degree, what do you envision for yourself in your future? Like, make a clear objective, spell that out. Okay, great. That definitely kind of sets the groundwork for what a good personal statement should look like. Uh, so, I have a few questions for you that's specific to my case. 
Who should proofread my personal letter? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned proofreading, Julie, because it's very, very important. You do want to sound intelligent and that you know how to write well. So I would say have as many people proofread it as you'd like, but what is most important is someone that actually knows how to proofread, someone sure. trained in proofreading, not just someone who's really great at English, a trained proofreader, because you want your statement to be concise and have a nice flow to it. Right. And uh, definitely the grammatical, no grammatical errors, that should all be on point. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, how long should my personal statement be? Okay, length, uh, we're very flexible with length here at Tulane, but my general suggestion is between one and two pages long because you do want to be concise. Mm -hmm. you, um, some personal statements can be quite lengthy and that would be fine, but you want your words to be meaningful. Sure. And review committees, they're moving pretty quickly. So you want to be aware of the re reviewer's time, right? And Absolutely. really not waste the time by putting anything unnecessary in there. You want it all to be very, very meaningful. Okay. So if it needs to go on longer than that, that's fine. But in general, I think you can say what you need to in between one and two pages. Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Uh, if there's something I'm worried about on my application, like maybe a GPA or a GRE, uh, should I address this in a personal statement? Yes, you definitely should address any concerns that you have in your statement. For example, something that is very common is when uh, someone comes from high school and they go out of town to a college and their freshman and sophomore year, maybe they struggle a little bit to get their footing and maybe scores aren't as good as you want them to be. And then maybe they can correct for that in sophomore, I mean junior and senior year and pull up their GPA. Yes. So if, that, if those first two years did affect your GPA mm -hmm. and you're concerned about that, then you would explain that. Or GRE or I, many common problems. There could be health issues or family crises. So many things could contribute to impact your life and your academic career during undergrad. Right. So explain that in a statement and I think that would clarify any issues. Definitely. It's a, it's a great place to kind of put a personal touch to it and be able to explain yourself because there's not really another place in the application to do that. Yeah, that's definitely true. This is your moment to shine, your personal statement. If you don't use this opportunity, your review committee is just looking at maybe numbers and other people's opinions about yourself. But this is where you have your chance to tell your story and express your passion for public health and explain who you are. And we have a holistic review process here, so our review committee looks at everything. Mm -hmm. It's all just separate parts of the application. It's not one main focus. Right. But this truly is your opportunity to shine and show the gifts that you have and can bring to the table. Absolutely. Uh, if I'm on the fence, I'm like, maybe this program, maybe this program. Uh, should I include both of those in the personal statement? Well, Julie, at our school, we allow only one program that you can apply to. Oh. Now, and it's there is a lot of crossover in public health, so you could definitely have interest in other areas as mm -hmm. well, but you're going to have to select one, and you don't want to seem indecisive. No. So when you select one, you could speak maybe how you have this general interest which led you to select one, mm -hmm. and so it's fine to mention that, but I would definitely sound decisive about your decision and the program that you're applying to. Sure, and there's certificates, right? So if I wanted to get my degree in one area, but then I wanted to kind of dabble into another field, I could do that as well. Yes, and I'm, I'm really, it's very common that our students will piggyback their degree with another focus. Right. For example, uh, epidemiologists might want to have a maternal and child health certificate. Definitely. Or vice versa. And it's, it's, we have certificate programs in all of our departments. Yeah, that's a great option. So that kind of helps narrow it down during the personal statement. I'll make sure to keep it just to one. Uh, do you have any like last advice that you've seen from all of your years of experience of what is really helpful? Uh, well, definitely, I will say, for sure, have it proofread very well. Try to be succinct and concise, mm -hmm. and really tell your story and show your passion. Okay, that sounds great. 
Uh, so I heard that you have some excerpts from current students who have written a personal statement so you can share it with us because I know I like examples so we're gonna and they're usually pretty helpful so can you provide I I did Julie I, I thought it might be very helpful as you said absolutely at your suggestion to provide an example and so I did get permission from our current students mm -hmm. that wrote some excellent statements so I'm going to read just some excerpts of to provide you with an example of something that we think is really well written great and then we'll talk about why it's well written okay okay so this is uh, from one of our female students she says when I was 15 I was a rower on a nationally ranked crew team an all honors high school student and the victim of a nearly fatal traumatic brain injury. Despite quitting crew and dropping down in most of my honors level classes, these factors, along with my miraculous full recovery, have come to define the person I am today and the person I see myself becoming in the near future. My interest in public health was first peaked during my years on the Saugatuck rowing team. I was always the strongest girl in the room and in rowing, I found an outlet for that strength. Muscle growth and athletic nutrition fascinated me. I would monitor my calories and macronutrients like a hawk to improve my athletic performance and physique, acting as my own sports nutritionist. I enjoyed reading up on nutrition trends and experimenting with my own diet and the ideas that I could make a career out of my passion my, excited me. After the accident, I had to catch up on the three months of my sophomore year of high school that I had missed. I was overwhelmed by the rigorous course load and I was still healing from my injuries. Academics, which had always come effortlessly to me, were suddenly a challenge. Returning to school for my junior year, I filled some of the gaps in my reduced course load with culinary classes. Mm. I would go on to spend three more semesters and two summers at the Staples High School kitchen as both a student and an instructor alongside Chef Gans. Chef Gans had a profound impact on shaping my interest in public health, and she became a mentor, friend, and supporter. She was also the first to suggest the nutrition program in Tulane School of Public Health as something for me to consider during my college search. Culinary classes became my new favorite subject, a source of pride and part of my identity. So Julie, what I think is really good about this statement is this actually is a student that had struggles mm -hmm. in her high school career and uh, in her, in throughout her academic career, and she's recovered from that and fought back to improve. Absolutely. And then she also expresses her passion for public health and then how someone sparked her interest in mm -hmm. nutrition. So I want to read just a little bit more of her statement. Oh, please do. <laughs> During my time as an undergraduate at Tulane, my education and experience had called my attention to three specific contemporary challenges confronted by the public health sector. Erroneous government spending on medical procedures that could have been avoided with appropriate preventative measures. The correlation between socioeconomic socioeconomic status, food access, and nutritional status, mm -hmm. and the dispro disproportionate burden of disease on minority public populations, especially immigrant groups. These are health injustices I hope to help solve during my career in public health and pursuing my master's degree from the School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine as a first step on this path. Tulane's world-renowned public health program will continue to build upon my knowledge, experience, and network in the public health sector and prepare me to make a positive impact on public health and nutritional challenges. So what's really great about that 
section, Julie, is it's very intelligently thought out. Mm -hmm. She specifically knows what she wants in her for her goals in her future, and she's took it, taken an intelligent look at the world around her and can relate that in her statement and express how coming to our school can help her achieve her goals in facing these challenges in public health. And then she gives a shout out to our school as yes. well, which was written very nicely. Mm -hmm. I think any review committee would love to hear that the applicant thinks that their school is very prestigious Absolutely. and can help them achieve their goals. So I think it's, it's an excellent statement. I have one more example, Julie. Good. All, <laughs> examples always help. So this it, uh, is just a brief example of a clear objective. So this is a, a male student at our school interested in epidemiology. He says, to achieve these goals, he, he talked about his different goals of uh, first being interested in medicine ah. and then finding out that the School of Public Health or public health programs open a whole new way to help serve in the world right. and be a good world steward. So to achieve these goals, I plan to work in graduate research at Tulane University and collaborate with faculty to publish professional journal articles while pursuing a master's of public health degree in epidemiology. Furthermore, my final objective after a fulfilling career is to enter academia as a professor or lecturer to mentor future aspiring epidemiologists. Wow. So very simply, succinctly stated, a clear objective. Yeah. Okay. And then I think I had one more section. Okay, one more section for that same student, which uh, it, he's showing evidence that provides the backup evidence for his goal mm -hmm. and then delivers his, his idea for his vision. Okay, I believe a career in epidemiology is important for preventative care and increasing the overall quality of life for a population by conducting vital research. Mm -hmm. Throughout my undergraduate career, including classes and working 30 hours a week, I have managed to fine tune my time management skills and gain a much deeper understanding of the importance of public health. I am driven to succeed in epidemiology and by obtaining a master's of public health degree from a well-respected institution such as Tulane University with its world-class community outreach and research programs I will gain the expertise necessary to make a measurable impact in the public health industry and to be on the forefront of groundbreaking research. Wow, that is well done. Yeah, it is well done. And it actually shows that he has researched our university. Yes. He looked into what's going on. He knows that we're very involved in community outreach mm -hmm. and that in we obtain many grants here. So we are actually on the forefront of research, definitely groundbreaking research. So he really uh, expresses his passion not only for public, for public health and epidemiology, but for our school. So I think that's uh, very good tips for you with your, with your pursuit of writing your statement. Yes, I have a lot to work on now that I've read those. Wow, uh, but that gave me a really great perspective on what my personal statement should look like, and I really appreciate all of your help. Hopefully, it helps everyone else too. Yes, I hope so. I hope so. But okay, yeah. well, good luck in writing your statement, Julie. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do fine. All right, well, thank you for joining us today, and thank you, Julie, and good luck to you and your bright future. Thank you for all your experience. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, everyone. Bye.